Domestic news now on Britain's burgeoning benefits culture. Startling new figures have revealed every constituency in Britain saw a rise in sickness benefits claims last year. Labour Party analysis found regions with Conservative MPs had some of the biggest increases, with affluent areas in the south seeing claimants of incapacity benefits jump by a third or even more. Commuter and rural areas, which traditionally have had lower benefit numbers, had the biggest proportional increase compared to deprived inner city areas. Now, it follows official figures released last month that showed mental health was now the leading reason behind incapacity benefit claims and that overall claims were up 400,000 in a year. Former Health Minister Lord Bethel thinks the figures should act as a wake-up call to the government. I think that we need to abandon this collective denial. Uh, I think the government needs to look really closely at these figures and accept the fact that uh, there's a huge amount of genuine physical illness in the country uh, and hundreds of thousands, millions of people are just too sick to work and they are not just sick, they're sick and fed up. The really striking number is that the average number of morbidities is three. In other words, people have three things wrong with them, not just one. These aren't people who are just feeling a bit grumpy and can't get out of bed to go to work. These people are, uh, uh, are carrying significant illness and, in addition, have got uh, mental health problems, which is very common if you're ill. I think uh, Lord Bethel made some really valid points there. If you have three things wrong with you, then clearly you're probably going to be claiming incapacity benefit. Also, the changes that have been made to job seekers allowance mean that it's better for people to try and get incapacity benefit than you know, going on what we used to call uh, the dull. And waiting lists. If you have seven million people on waiting lists, a large proportion of those people aren't going to be fit enough to work. Clearly, some people will say, you know, this is you know, lazy Britons who, who can't be bothered to go and get a job. But it's it's more complicated than that. I think it is. And I think the problem is um, mental illness is basically invisible. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who are on uh, incapacity benefit who are saying that they have anxiety or anxiety disorders or depression. We, we've talked about this before. We pathologise a lot of normal human experiences, especially amongst the young. People are claiming benefits. I'm not saying they're all scamming the system, but we can't be that much more anxious and depressed and, you know, unable to work than we used to be. So there are a lot of people who are saying that they're not well, and it's not a physical illness. Mental illness has become a kind of catch-all for a lot of other issues in this country. But do you think that... Or people are getting sick, or they're genuinely scamming the system. Do you think, though, that we've become almost lazy in our analysis of this, because I'll preface my comments, which are probably going to be unpopular, by saying that those who need benefits genuinely need them, they should absolutely receive them. Of course. Them. However, um, for the number to go up by 400,000, in my mind, in a one year, means that there's something seriously wrong. Yeah. And I think that what Lord Bethel is talking about is actually the wrong sort of thing. He's almost making an excuse for it, saying, we've got to see that there's a crisis and we must do things. I think, yes, we've got a crisis, but we've actually got people who are extracting the Michael. Uh, they're, they're taking benefits that they shouldn't be receiving. Doctors are making it easy on themselves, just signing people off rather than actually tackling the problems that people have or, or helping people genuinely move from being, you know, waking up and, and having a selection of problems and giving them a pathway to, to, uh, to getting better. Now, of course, some of that is all caught up in the 7.5 million people who are waiting for health care from the NHS. Half of it is probably caught up in the fact that we seem to have forgotten that social care should exist and should be provided in this country. And I think there's an element of, um, uh, of people saying and, and jumping on this mental health bandwagon because, as you say, yes. you can't see it, you can't prove it, you can't disprove it. Can't disprove and it. that means that the methods that we have in order to analyse, uh, analysis is, you know, needs to be done. So I, I think we need to root and branch sort this system out. Yeah, I think uh, today people who face adversity and challenges uh, and have, then have stress from that are then being told, no, no, you've got depression, anxiety, mental health issues, and it's too easy. It's far too easy. Uh, you're completely right about the universal credit change, job seekers allowance, changes were made to that so people are now getting less job seekers benefits. But if you are claiming disability, you can get up to £5,000 extra a year. So we are incentivising people to say, I've got mental health issues, here's another £5,000 a year for it. If the system doesn't work as it currently does. <laughs> the system currently doesn't work as, as, uh, as it's supposed to. Um, but I don't see it what changing, unfortunately. I just don't see it changing.
James is shaking his head at me because he thinks I'm going to disagree with him. I'd never disagree with you, James. I think he's shaking his head at you because your phone rang when I was I know, talking. it's so patronising. <laughs> don't you think it's so patronising? I mean, I obviously know that my phone shouldn't <laughs> ring during a live tea. I don't need James shaking his head at me. Is it? Well, that I, helpful? I shook my but head I the feel, last time it happened. I feel, quite, I feel, I feel quite depressed. So it just shows that, like all politicians, you never listen. To I feel quite most. depressed. So, I feel quite depressed. I'm not sure I can carry on. I might go off and have to claim benefits if you carry on shaking your head at me. You do. You're in you the do. House You're in the House of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> they just, hey, and just, you uh, have to be mad to work there. I can't come back from that. <laughs> no, best no way back. James Max. Right. Totally humiliated. Are they all scroungers, or is this? Well, system... we covered this today on my Times radio show, which is on at lunchtimes between one and three. We had an expert from the New Economics Foundation who did say that the bar is set very high in terms of the test. You do have to get signed off by your GP, but I think we all know in the real world, getting signed off by your GP is not that difficult. You do need to be assessed to whether or not you're fit for work. But I think JJ's hit the nail on the head, and you hit the nail on the head earlier. If you change the benefit system and you give people a more lucrative way of claiming benefits, guess what's going to happen? The figures are going to migrate from job seekers back to ah. disability benefits. But I, and I think, again, uh, it's nuanced and you meet in the middle. James Bethel is right. You know, we've been through COVID. We're going through a cost of living crisis. People are totally fed up. Brexit, I mean, everything. You think, what is going on in this country? You need direction and leadership. It's affecting people, but at the same time, James is right, unfortunately, because he really <laughs> annoys me. Uh, if you see those figures go up by 400,000 a year, there is something else going and, on. And just before we move, one of the other issues, not just about getting your doctor to sign you off, um, but since COVID, they've made the system where the benefits office gives you the benefit has all gone online. And, you know, rather like asylum seekers, whatever, you take away that human contact of working out, you know, that person, human saying, you know, are you really depressed or anxious? And you're not surprised to see the numbers skyrocket. But also an anxiety and depression and stress, these are subjective things. These are, as I say, invisible. You yeah. can't assess that. If you say to someone, I'm deeply depressed, I can't work, I think they're chicken and egg. I think if you don't work, yes, you'll be depressed. Yeah. If you're sitting at home all day, yes, you'll be anxious and depressed and, you know, stressed out. And it, it, you've got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and get on with it. Yeah.